I've done it again. Another month, another grind. Back to the top in Platinum 1 with my boys, the Ancient Warriors. If you guys like Dynasty Warriors, if you guys don't like playing meta, if you like something kind of interesting and kind of rogue, then I think Ancient Warriors is the deck for you. It's really fun, really great going second in particular, and a lot of cool interactions that you might not see in other decks. And as you can see right here, I made it back to the top. Platinum won. Took a long time. Took about a couple days of hard grinding. But even though I fought a million Eldritch decks and Ad Emancipator, Sky Striker, Orcist, I fought, I don't even know, Dinosaur. I fought, oh my gosh, the PTSD is coming back to me. I fought Tri Brigades. I, tr I fought Lyra Lusk. I fought Drytrons. It didn't matter. I went through all of them. And if you want to take a look, here's my match history. Uh, I did pretty well. I was on a huge winning streak uh, for a couple times. I went through a couple of different losses. Uh, this one in particular down here was a pretty good match, but I, I lost that one. But everything else went very well, went swimmingly well. You can see right here, here's my past uh, three ranks. So I've been at the top ever since this game came out and I strongly believe I am one of the best Ancient Warriors players ever ever to live and I'd like to show you the deck profile uh, that I used to get to the top and uh, if you've seen my other videos this deck list has changed quite a bit since the first uh, time I got uh, Platinum 1 I've went through a lot of changes, and I think this build right here is going to be my preferred build from now on, unless I can see something else to change. But I think this is going to be the most optimal, in my opinion, for going second in particular. So let's go through everything and see if we can learn something. So I got my hand traps. So in my earlier builds, I played a lot more hand traps, but I've tried to minimize the amount of hand trips I played only the bare essentials because unfortunately this guy right here Lu Feng is like xenophobic he does not like other cards that are not ancient warriors and I'll explain him in a little bit but basically he will turn off other monster effects and other monster effects will turn themselves off if he uses his effect so that's why I tried to use as minimal amount of hand traps as possible because if you use a hand trap while Lu Feng uses his ability you're not using Lu Feng anymore so I learned that the hard way and there were many times when I had to choose between using a hand trap or using Lu Feng's ability so I tried to only get the minimum amount of hand traps that I needed I got two max C I really wish I had a third but as you can see with my crafting points I don't have a third but if I did have a third, uh, maybe I would take out, uh, let's see, maybe one of the Guan Yuns for another Maxi. I think Maxi is a great card, really keeps combo decks in check. Uh, definitely needed with all the crazy things I saw. There was a duel I saw with Ad Emancipator. I think he made like six cards that could negate and everything. So Maxi definitely was a big part of my victory there. So Maxi, definitely useful. I think you can splash this into most decks. I think 2 is okay, though. I think 2 is okay. Ash Blossom, uh, very generic, very applicable to many situations. So not much to say about Ash Blossom, but try to find the best time to use uh, Ash Blossom. For example, it's really tempting to negate like a pot of extravagance or something, but maybe there's something else that's uh, more important. So think about it. Here is a new addition to the deck, Zodiac Thoroughblade. So I did add a Zodiac engine with Zeus into my extra deck because, uh, well, the extra deck isn't too important since I use Pot of Extravagance, but there have been times when Zodiac Thoroughblade with the rest of the Zodiacs definitely came in clutch and definitely gave me another option. I'm really liking the Zodiac package in the deck because I find that this deck really like is very linear and runs out of steam really quickly. And I think the flexibility of having the Zodiac engine with the Zeus is a really nasty surprise for a lot of decks. 
So he's definitely appreciated. I'm going to keep him in for now. I'm really liking the flexibility and the alternative plays I can get with the Zodiac package. So I'll be having Thoroughblade. Just one copy is necessary. You're going to go Zodiac Thoroughblade into probably Chaka 9, and then Kong, and then Tiger Mortar, and then Dryden to pop a card, and then finally the Borbo to direct attack. And since you direct attacked it, and since you did a direct attack, uh, you can summon Zeus in the next main phase. So that's a big nasty surprise for a lot of decks, and definitely gives the deck a lot more power, I think. So definitely appreciated. Now let's get to the real meat and potatoes. Let's get to the real the real stars of the show. We got three Swanmo, absolutely necessary. He is the best starter in this deck. You want to see him. Really flexible, gives you a lot of searches, gives you a nasty effect right here. When another Ancient Warrior Monster's effect is activated, he can target one card and return it to the hand. One opponent's uh, monster. And I loved using Swanmo along with Gamma Seal, the trick with Swanmo. Basically, if you summon Gamma Seal to the opponent's side, you, you tribute a boss monster or something. And then Swanmo's effect can activate, and then you can grab the Gamma Seal right back to your hand. It's like it never left home. It comes back to your hand, and your opponent is much worse off. So definitely great card. He's your searcher. He's going to discard cards. Send cards from your hand to field to the graveyard to add another Ancient Warrior from the deck to the hand. And it really depends on what you want to do. Sometimes I would just add Lufong, just to be very simple. Sometimes I would add Jugo Kong for Link Plays or for a Spell and Trap Negate. Or, you know, it could be any of the others. It really depends on the situation. So, very flexible and amazing starter. Next is the second starter, uh, Liu Xuan. He's not as good, I think. But he's definitely, I think, needed. He's definitely needed. You need another starter. You need some more uh, level 4s because there's a lot of high level cards in this deck. So basically, he's another starter because if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can send one card from your hand of field to the graveyard to special summon an ancient warrior from the deck. So it really depends, once again, on the situation. Sometimes I picked Guan Yun because he's a pretty big body. Sometimes I picked another Swan Mo to search for more cards. So it really depends on what you want to do. It's very creative. It's very flexible. Juga Kong. He is the Spell and Trap Negate. And if you happen to have Liu Xuan on the board, you can also negate uh, monster effects. But I'm telling you, this almost never came up. But it's comforting to know that you do have it. But I usually used him for his special summon ability because if this card is added from the deck to the hand by the effect of an Ancient Warrior card, so that's going to be including Swan Mo mostly, but you can also do it from... Three sagas, right? Uh, three visits, excuse me. So basically, he's going to give you an extra body on board. And sometimes I would go into link plays with the double dragon lord because uh, Jugo Kong is a win card and double dragon lord needs a wind ancient warriors monster. So sometimes I would get Swan Mo search. I would search for Jugo Kong. Jugo Kong special summons himself. Double dragon lord link summon. And Double Dragon Lord will search a card. It's usually going to be Lu Feng. And now you have Double Dragon Lord and Lu Feng on the board. So a pretty decent board. You got a quick effect return. And you got a quick effect pop. So pretty good. Next we have Loyal Guan Yin. The God of War himself. So he's pretty good. Especially since this deck is built going second. I really wish once again that this only only word was gone, was missing, was erased. Because if only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from the hand. So it has to be a clear board for you and a, you know, a full board for them. And the funny thing about Guan Yin, if you ever experienced this, is that it's not once per turn, his special summon effect. So sometimes my opponent would use like a Psy Frame Gamma or Apollo Usa on Guan Yin, and they try to negate his ability. But they get a really nasty surprise when Guan Yin just activates again. And again, until he gets onto the board or he's destroyed. 
So I remember this one poor player. He had a four material Apollo Usa on the board. I used Guan Yun over and over again, and I guess he didn't realize or just didn't think about it that Guan Yun just kept activating. So he's not once per turn. So if that ever happens, you can have a good laugh and maybe get a free body on board. Uh, he, he basically also protects the Ancient Warriors from targeting effects. And this didn't really come up too much, but if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can target one monster they control and destroy it. So very nice, gives you a free body. Zhang De, he usually is for OTKs. He can become really strong because he can gain 300 attack for each monster your opponent controls. Usually I would use him as a uh, body for more damage. But most of the time, actually, I would use him to trigger uh, Swan Mo's effect because Zhang De, you can activate his ability. And since Swan Mo activates his bounce to the hand when another Ancient Warrior card is played, then Zhang De is perfectly fine. So he can help activate uh, Swan Mo's very useful bounce effect. And I'm really liking Zhang De. One copy is more than enough. Gamma Seal. The destroyer of boss monsters. The turtle god himself, Gamma Seal. I think I already explained the Swan Mo trick. Uh, if you have a Gamma Seal on the opponent's side, you can tell him to come home, right? Lucy, come home, right? Lucy. So Gamma Seal will come home to your hand if Swan Mo targets him. So very nice. Gamma Seal has eaten. He has devoured many powerful boss monsters. And very, very good card. Lu Feng, the selfish warrior, Lu Bu himself. So he's really useful. I think he's necessary for the deck. But he's very selfish in the fact that if you activate his effect, other monster effects that are not ancient warriors will not activate. This includes hand traps, which I learned the hard way through many trial and error. So... You can special summon him if you control the highest attack Ancient Warrior on the card. You can quick effect pop. But remember, once again, he turns other cards off. And if a hand trap activates, he will turn himself off. You cannot use his pop. So you definitely have to be careful with him. And here's the absolute worst part about him. He will betray you if you're weak. What do I mean by that? During the end phase, if your opponent controls a monster with the highest attack on the field, get control of this card to your opponent. Yeah. So he will betray you. This is a historical reference to the real person, to the real Lubu. And it definitely lost me a couple games. But I think it's worth it to have him in. You definitely need him. He's going to give you a lot of power and a lot of strength to the deck. Harpy's Feather Duster. You have to fight back row deck somehow. So definitely needed. Harpy's Feather Duster. Pot of Extravagance. Always remember to activate this first. You'll get two cards, hopefully, if there's not an Ash Blossom waiting for you. But there usually is. Very sad. Lightning Storm. A great going second card. Tanky. I hope it doesn't get limited soon. But it'll search uh, your level 4 lower uh, Beast Warrior cards. That's including Thoroughblade, so sometimes I would search for Thoroughblade to give me Zodiac plays. But most of the time, I would search for Swan Mo, probably. Uh, three Visits, the only Ancient Warrior spell card I'm playing. He will help you search for other cards. And if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon an Ancient Warrior card from your hand. So you can definitely be very creative with this card. You can send it with Liu Xuan or Swan Mo or something to trigger its effect. And now you have a free body on board. So very nice. Called by the Grave. Definitely one of my favorite additions to the deck. You can banish Ash Blossom, Maxi, Sky Striker, Ace Ray, Eldlich, and a million other cards. So definitely needed. Especially since you don't want to get negated. If Swan Mo is negated, you probably are going to be left with nothing except him. So it definitely sucks to get Swan Mo negated. So this is just some kind of defense against it. Forbidden Droplet, an amazing card. Absolutely amazing. It can also trigger 
this card three visits effect so definitely needed it can definitely help with breaking boards and evenly mashed another amazing card that can definitely break boards now down here i have the full zodiac package with the zeus i explained earlier this is with thoroughblade gives some flexibility gives some uh, surprise and gives some power to the deck so definitely appreciated uh, before in my other decks i didn't really have a usable extra deck but i really wanted to you know make something useful with this and it's surprisingly budget there's only Dryden, ultra rare not that bad and zodiac or uh, excuse me zeus so not too expensive of a package i think Baguska. Baguska. A new addition to the deck. I went into him just a couple times. Two level 4 monsters. This is when things are going really badly. And you need to pray and stall for two turns. Hopefully. But uh, I wouldn't rely too much on him. So he's an option if necessary. Double Dragon Lord. Amazing card. Definitely need him. When he's Link Summoned, you can grab... Another Ancient Warrior card. Usually I would pick Lufong, but sometimes I would pick Druga Kong. And sometimes I would pick Swan Mo for any follow-up plays. And his attack boost also helps with preventing Lufong's betrayal. He's going to make you stronger, so he's going to help prevent uh, Lufong from betraying you. And he's a quick effect. Return to the hand. And he can send one card from the hand or field to the graveyard. And once again, this can activate three visits. So very flexible. Very cool. Nightmare Unicorn. I thought it's a pretty cool card to add in. And Apollo Usa. I've only went into her once, I think, in like 100 duels. But you know, the option's there. The option is there. So this is my deck profile for the Ancient Warriors for Season 3. I Got to the top in record speed, grinded hard, and I made it to the top with my Dynasty Warriors boys. The Trouble from the East, the Ancient Warriors. So I'm really proud of this deck. I'm really happy about it. I just returned to the game, you know, when Master Duel started. And these guys have been absolutely amazing in making my experience a lot more enjoyable and a lot more fun. So thanks a lot, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And I hope you can pick up Ancient Warriors too. All right, see you later.